One team in particular is extremely popular among many of their fellow Tier 1 peers, the Polish Grom. The Grom are extremely active on the world stage. They never back down from a challenge and are famous for their determined spirit. For me, war and terrorism is like a disease, like a plague, and the Grom is a medicine curing them. The Tier 1 Polish counter-terrorist unit, uh, Grom, comes from a Polish word, uh, Grom meaning thunderbolt, uh, but the acronym is Operational Mobile uh, Reaction Group. The Grom was created in 1990, and since then, I think it has become an honorable force in the Polish military system. Polish Grom has a very wide range of experience now. They have participated in operations in support of United Nations requirements, such as Haiti. In 1994, they helped operate against armed criminal elements in the country, and again, with high regard. In over two decades, the Grom claim to have never lost one of their own during an operation. Yes, this is true. The Grom have never lost any of the soldiers during the war. Unfortunately, I have lost friends during a training accident back in Poland, but never during an operation. Not only are the Grom efficient, but they're also an inspiration to many others. Many people in the world think the real achievement is to kill someone. We think that a bigger achievement is to give somebody a life. I have taken part in the operation of recapturing hostages a couple of times, and there is nothing more moving than seeing tears in the eyes of an adult man who was released by us five minutes before he was to be executed. The Polish Grom are just a charismatic bunch of guys. I am happy to hear that everyone around from special units like the Grom. Why is this? Maybe because we feel like nothing is impossible. We are also a team of friends, and people are just happier in a friendly environment. The Grom are known for their hard work and their hard play. It's been said that you don't want to try and drink these guys under the table. The Polish Grom like to think that they can outdrink everyone else and there may be some truth to that. Is there anyone here who, after having done hard and exhausting job, would not be willing to have a good time and have a drink? In 2011, a ship and crew operated by South Korea was hijacked by pirates, and the Koreans showed the world just how hard they had been training. The Republic of Korea UDT, or Korean Navy SEALs, are heavily modeled after and often trained with their US SEAL brothers. With a constant threat looming at their border to the north, the UDT have good reason to always stay sharp. North Korean agents are a constant threat and have been known to use what are called midget submarines to infiltrate South Korean waters. The South Korean UDT are a unique bunch. They actually send guys through our pipeline, through our training, and take some of that knowledge back to their own units. An operation that indicates the capability of the Republic of Korea Navy SEALs is the, uh, is the Samho Jewelry operation in 2011. There's been a dramatic rescue on board a hijacked freighter in the Arabian Sea. The early morning raid had been carried out with a South Korean destroyer and a Lynx helicopter providing covering fire. The ship and her 21 crew members were taken out into international waters while it's believed the pirates waited for backup or their ransom to be met. South Korea had to act. An operation such as the one the UDT, or the South Korean UDT SEALs carried out is very complex. It requires intel, it requires assumed risk, it requires execution on a nearly perfect level. Just before dawn on January 21st, the UDT saw their opportunity and made their move. Using small fast boats, the Korean team hit the freighter like a typhoon. For the ROC Navy SEALs to fight the pirates and rescue the hostages is like fighting through a 15-story building that's made of steel with steel doors laid on its side. They would be fighting from compartment to compartment, having to work their way, cut their way, blast their way through the doors as the pirates tried to hold off their attackers. If you can imagine taking down a target, which you've never been before, you don't know where the bad guys are, and you're clearing this systematically, leaning on the training that you've done in the past and relying on your teammates to watch your back. It's a very complex operation, and there's a great deal of risk involved. The five-hour siege ended with the killing of eight pirates, capturing of five more, and the freeing of all 21 crew members. Three UDT operators were injured in the op, but in the end, they all survived. The Korean 
UDT seals are a highly seasoned, effective unit. They prove in time and time again to be effective at deterring and handling some of these relatively volatile situations that pop up. One of the lesser known special operations forces in the world is the Canadian JTF-2. Canadian Task Force 2 teams are a secretive organization, particularly counter-terrorist. They're there for the defense of Canadian uh, government um, to be used very much as a, in a counter-terrorist role. The recent rush to valuable natural resources in the north has given Canada a reason to discourage troublemakers from crossing their borders. No one wants a run-in with a highly trained JTF-2 Arctic unit. The JTF-2 uh, was responsible for providing security for the Vancouver Olympics. You know, Olympics are watched around the world. They're a high-stakes event where a country can't afford to have something go wrong. The terrorist activity in the 1972 Munich Games set the stage for Tier 1 Spec Ops forces to be a part of future Olympic events. Canada has gone to great lengths to keep the JTF-2 out of the public eye. Secrecy is extremely important to all special operations forces and a reason for some operators to remain anonymous.